Hello there, today I'm gonna to talk to you about wild hogs, specifically what to do after the shot. Guys, we wanna take these pigs home. We wanna have a good meal with our friends and our family. It is crucial to what happens to that animal right after it is shot to make sure it is gonna be a quality animal for us to eat and to share with our friends and family. So today, we're gonna to talk wild hogs a little bit, what happens after the shot. Now, when we're talking about wild hogs in Texas, guys, there's six million wild hogs down here in Texas. That's what they tell us. Totally believe that. And it is a great way to extend your hunting season. You know, deer season's over. You're not ready to quit. Pigs are a great way to take your hunting season year round. We can hunt pigs 24-7, 365. That's winter, spring, fall, summer, daylight, dark, we can hunt pigs. So it's a great time to do it. I'm gonna flash some pictures up in here of, uh, of some pigs we've taken down here in Texas. I'm gonna go way back when I was a young man, give you a picture of me and my buddy, uh, Pete Neglin. Dads would send us out and go, hey, go shoot some pigs, we got a party. And we got free meat, right? Give you a shot of my son when he's young. And then uh, we're gonna take some other pigs and I'm gonna show you what my nephew does running dogs. Maybe some hanging up that, uh, that I've shot here in the last few years. But guys, they're a lot of fun. They can't extend your season. And on top of that, they are fantastic to eat. They are wonderful table fare, but you have to take care of them. Now, one problem we have down here in Texas is the heat. So even though we can hunt them in the summer and we can hunt them in the winter, guys, sometimes during the rut, it's 70, 80 degrees down here. So we could shoot a pig in December and have 80 degrees weather. Number one thing you could do is, is get the guts out of that animal as fast as you can. So if you shoot a pig early on in your hunt and you let it lay there till after dark, so it's laying there from six to seven o'clock, bacteria is growing. That's what's taking place. If you can get him, get him gutted, get him on ice, best way to do it. If it's a nice cold day, you guys up north, it's wonderful. Y'all, hey, hang it up, gut it, let it hang for a few days, let it drain. Whenever it's cold down here, I do that, not only with my pigs, but also with my deer. It's a great thing to practice when you're harvesting wild game is to let them hang the best you can. If you don't have the option of letting them hang, one thing that you can do is, is you can always quarter them out, throw them in an ice chest and leave them in there three, four, five days. Just let that water drain off, keep putting fresh ice up on top of them. That's gonna help a whole lot. After mine have sat in the ice chest for a few days, what I do is, is I'll go out and I'll actually uh, go ahead and package them, put them in the freezer, and that's all I'm gonna do to them till it's time to eat. And now let's talk about what do we do when they come out of that vacuum wrap package. All right, folks, we've got over there and uh, we've got our animals frozen, we've pulled them out. And what we wanna do next is we wanna thaw them out. Number one way is in your refrigerator over a few days. That's the best way to thaw it. If you wanna do it a little faster, put it in your sink with running water. You don't want it in standing water. We're practicing uh, safe food practices here, all right? I am a chef and, and that's something that I teach all the time is how to properly thaw out food. Guys, don't leave it on your counter overnight and don't put it in your sink overnight or don't leave it in standing water. If we uh, practice safe food practices, we're not gonna grow bacteria. We're not gonna have some of that wildness. And what we're gonna do this step, what wildness is there will help pull it out. We're gonna put that meat in an ice slurry. Guys, I've got a, an ice chest and I'm gonna show y'all that, but it's full of ice and water and about a cup of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna let my meat soak in that 24, 48 hours, a little longer won't hurt either. But uh, that's gonna help kill bacteria, it's gonna help draw out any wild taste that you may have in that hog. So once you've done that, it's ready to go. You're gonna pull it out, pat it dry, and you're gonna season that baby up and get it on a barbecue pit. That's what we're fixing to do right now. I'm gonna take you back to this morning and show you what I did with that ham to get it going and also what we're gonna to do to this back strap because it's almost time to get it on there. So hey, let's spend the rest of the time here today talking on uh, wild hog recipes. I'll meet you over at the barbecue pit. Let's head over there. For the slather, I use mustard and it does not take a whole lot. So a little bit goes a long ways. That's enough that I can flip this over and probably get this side also. If not, I'll add a little bit more, right? And this is just gonna help that rub stick. I've got a good rub I'm gonna show you all today. 
I'll also put up a recipe for my rub. That's looking pretty good. It's going here. We're ready for some seasoning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double layer this, guys. You always wanna layer your flavors. But I've got some uh, Galindos. I got their Texas Trinity, which is a salt, pepper, garlic. And I got their beef and hog. That's what I'm gonna use today. I will give you mine. But to layer this, first layer is the SPG, right? Got a little salt, pepper, and garlic going on here, guys. I think Rick uh, drops a little onion powder in on his also. So get a nice coating of that. This is a good big piece of meat. Don't be scared about getting plenty of seasoning on it. And remember, a ham's not quite as fatty as a pork butt is. So got to be careful not to dry it out if you wanted to inject it. Hey, injections work great, but I cooked and ate a whole lot of good pork long before I ever uh, injected any pork. But an injection, even a simple apple juice injection, yeah, it would add some moisture to this. And again, Galindo's uh, beef and hog, it's good seasoning. It's on there, ready to go. We're gonna go put this on the pit. And like I said, I'm looking at about seven or eight hours. We'll go about four uh, uncovered and then uh, we'll wrap it up and take it to about 200, 205 degrees. So let's get it on that barbecue pit. What we have on here for smoke is about 70, 30, oak to mesquite. We like mesquite down here in South Texas, guys, and uh, it can be overpowering. So what I do is I add just a little bit to give everybody that nice mesquite flavor they like, but we use that oak for a good, steady cold bed. It's gonna burn more steady. It's not gonna burn as hot and it's not gonna give us as strong of a smoke. So we're gonna see y'all again in about four hours. If it looks like it's drying out, we may be here a little bit sooner and I'll spritz it a little bit and tell you how to do that. Let's spritz this ham real quick. Gonna get it spritzed up real nice. That is looking pretty. That ham is looking nice. It has been on about four hours now. So we're gonna wrap it up, spritzed it twice in the process of getting it there. Let me move my rubs back. So fold it over. If you got foil, be careful. Those bones will poke through there. So you wanna be careful with those. Got one right there, gonna fold it up. This side. Roll it over. Pull it tight. Roll it over, we're back up to where we had the side we had up is up once again. What I'm gonna do is, is just fold this under. Not gonna worry if that bottom's a little bit thick on there. That's not gonna hurt anything. I got a nice package, tight. It's gonna go back on the pit. It's not gonna last. It's not, it's not gonna make it four hours. It's, it's pretty getting pretty good right now, starting to tender up. I figure two and a half, three hours, we're gonna have this off for our overall cook time of, oh, about seven hours, maybe six and a half to seven hours. But let's get this back on there, and I'm gonna show you how I take care of my uh, back strap pork loin. Guys, we probably got about two and a half hours, maybe less left on that pork butt. And we are looking at getting these uh, loins ready. Want them to be ready somewhere around the same time. I'm thinking an hour and a half to two hours. So by the time I prep these, get them ready to go, I'm thinking we're going to be down to that hour and a half to two hours on that. But I'm going to get these ready to go. I'm going to seize them. I'm going to let them sit, let them sweat out a little bit. Then we're going to get them over on that pit and they're not real big, so we're going 90 minutes, two hours tops. They'll be ready to go, and we're gonna have a great pork dinner tonight with some back straps and with that ham that we cooked up. So let's come in here close. These are trimmed up pretty good, so I'm gonna come in with a little rib grind on them. This is a nice course, got some good pepper in it, a little brown sugar, salts. It's an excellent, excellent seasoning, and not just for pork, it'll work on just about anything. That looks good there. I'm gonna flip them over. You can see where I've cleaned up most of that silver skin. Let's come with some rib grind on these. 
go set these in the refrigerator, let them sweat out. Then I'll let you see me getting them on the pit. It is time to get these on the pit. You see we have our wrapped uh, butt on there. We'll set these kind of right in the middle up here on top. Scrunch them up. Always got to scrunch them. They're ready to go. See you on about 90 minutes when it's time to get them off. That ham is off and resting and we're ready to look at it. But first we're going to take a look at these uh, pork loins that we did. They are just really pretty. Got some beautiful color on them. And I bet you they're still moist on the inside and tasting wonderful. Let's slice into them and see how they are. This loin is looking tremendous. Let's uh, take some off the end here and take a look at it. Man, would you look at that smoke ring on here? That is nice. It is a pretty loin. It is going to be a tasty loin. I promise you that uh, rib grind from uh, Chicken Fried Barbecue is excellent. Folks, that is beautiful. If you look, it is moist in there. That is not dried out. It is a beautiful, beautiful pork loin. This ham is looking pretty also. We're gonna cut into it right there and see if we can take some off. Ooh, buddy, would you look at that? Look at this bone. Bone came right off. That is tender. That is looking pretty. Two great ways to uh, prepare hog, right? Hey, and how to take care of it in the field. Use a few of those tips this season and it's gonna make your hunt even that much more successful. Remember the rubs I showed you today or use the rub that, uh, that I put up on the screen. That's my barbecue rub and it's a good one also. Or just use your favorite barbecue season, they'll work. Hey, take a couple of the tips I gave you today on, on care for your game and I guarantee you, you're gonna be a lot happier next time you cook some of that wild hog. And if you wanna make sure you get some of that wild game, make sure you're wearing that Scree gear. I know the guys over at Scree will really appreciate that. And I tell you what, guys, it is extreme hunting gear and you're gonna like it. I am Chef Johnny. I'm on Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. That's where you can find me. Thanks for stopping by, sure do appreciate it. So long.